Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you have been enjoying the stories told on this channel feel free to hit the subscribe button below and help the channel grow. Also for those that are interested, merch is now available for Underworld Diary supporters. If you want to check it out click the link in the description below. Now back to today's episode. In this episode of Underworld Diary, we will take a look into the Philadelphia Mafia. Being seen as one of the biggest mafia families outside of New York, Philly has had a notorious past filled with violence. This violence was especially ratcheted up during the 1980s when infamous boss Nicky Scarfa took control. Under the command of Nicky Scarfa the Philly Mafia would enter into a 10-year period that saw over 30 people killed. Scarfa was known to be hot-headed and extremely quick to order hits on anyone who challenged him. This notion is extremely important to remember for the main focus of today's episode Salvatore Salvitesta. With the Philly mob having many notable figures, the story of Salvitesta is seen mainly as a side note in a bigger story. However, Salvitesta was able to rise through the ranks of the mafia at a rate that has not been seen to this day. Being respected and feared by everyone in the Philly mob, Testa was on track to become a major player in the family and possibly even become boss later on. This fast path to the top would be stopped dead in its tracks when, at the age of 28, Salvi Testa was murdered. This murder resulted in an uprising in the Philly Mafia, creating years of instability. Many point to this murder as unnecessary in the beginning of the downfall of Nicky Scarfo. In order to understand the importance of his murder, we need to first look at his life story. Being born in 1956 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Salvi was truly born into the life. His father was a reputed Mafia member and eventual boss Philip the Chicken Man Testa. Growing up the young Testa would be constantly surrounded by aspects of the life. With his father associating with many high-powered members of the Philadelphia Mafia. At the time the Philadelphia Mafia was run by the quote gentle Don Angelo Bruno. Angelo Bruno, known to be level-headed for a mobster, would opt for diplomacy when possible, creating stability in the Philadelphia underworld. During this time Salvi Testa would largely stay out of trouble and would attend John Newman High School. Encouraged and motivated to gain an education, Salvi would graduate from high school in 1974 and go off to college. He would attend Temple University. However, dropping out after his first year, Testa decided that college wasn't for him. After dropping out he would begin working in the real estate business for a few years. Before he would take a turn and follow his father into the life. With his educational journey ending, Testa had aspiration to join the underworld. Seeing the power, respect and money his father had throughout his life, Selby would be lured closer and closer to life in the mob. Starting off by assisting his father in his alleged loan sharking, gambling and drug dealing. Organizations, Selby got a quick intro into the workings of the mafia. Being the son of a well-known and established mafia member Selby was seen as a sort of royalty in the mob. Being able to rise in the ranks fast, Selby would have to prove that he was more than just Philip's son. He was alleged to have done this by committing violent crimes throughout the area as well as using his business mind to expand many of his father's rackets. Salvi would grow a reputation outside of his father's name over the next few years, gaining respect as a tough and ruthless mafia upcomer. This reputation as well as his familial ties would help skyrocket Salvi's criminal career in the 1980s. In 1980 the reputed boss of the Philadelphia Mafia, Angelo Bruno, would be shot and killed in the front seat of his car. This murder was unexpected for many throughout the Mafia, as Bruno was well respected and seen as one of the more fair bosses the Mafia had. However, in a poorly planned power play members of the Mafia would look to take out the Don to take control of the area. This turned out to be an extremely ill-advised move with the people alleged to be responsible, being shelved or killed. This brazen hit turned out to be good for Salvi and his father, as after the dust from the incident settled, Philip was promoted to the boss of the family. In this new position, Philip would influence the entire Philadelphia underworld. Using this power, Philip would hold an initiation ceremony, inducting his son Salvi into the Mafia. Becoming a made man in the Philadelphia Mafia was a big step up for Salvi and saw his respect in the area solidify. With the schooling and organized crime already under his belt, Salvi would be fully educated in the rules of Costa Nostra over the years. Working on building up his father's rackets over the years, Salvi would be faced with a life-changing event in 1981. On March 15, 1981, Philip Testa would be walking up the steps to his house. As he reached for the door an explosion would go off, instantly killing the newly crowned mafia boss. 
later discovered to be a nail bomb that was planted under his porch. This bombing of a boss broke almost every rule of the mafia and, of course, infuriated members throughout the Philadelphia family. With this bombing alleged to have been conducted by Testa's then underboss Peter Casella and Capo Ricci and Frank Narducci Sr., the family would start a conflict. Salvi would of course be devastated by this news and want to get revenge immediately. This revenge would have to wait a little while the organization of the Philly mob figured out its new structure. This new structure would be finalized later that year with Nicky Scarfa taking over the head seat of the family. Nicky, a friend of Philip Testa, would look to take Salvi under his wing. Seeing potential in the young Salvi, Nicky allowed Salvi to take over his father's illicit rackets and more importantly, get revenge on the people responsible for his father's murder. With Casella fleeing to Florida, Salvi would only be able to deal with Frank Narducci. This would allegedly take place in January of 1982. Getting out of his car Frank Narducci would hear someone call out his name, before turning round and allegedly seeing Salvi Testa. Narducci would be shot in the head, dying immediately. This killing would represent the start of Testa's time as an enforcer in the Mafia, and would be especially useful over the years with the Civil War taking place in Philly. After taking control of the family Scarfa, looked to add stability to the family through violence and intimidation. Far from the docile Don, Scarfa wanted to expand his reach, power and most importantly the money he was receiving from his family. Scarfa would implement a sort of tax on any organized crime group operating out of Philadelphia. This tax would be accepted by most in the underworld as an unfortunate cost of doing business. However, one established mafia member would not accept this new tax and would flat out refuse to pay. This was Henry the Hunchback Rickabine. Scarfa, not one to back down, would demand he pay or face repercussions. Doubling down Rickabine would refuse once again, starting a war between the two factions in the Philadelphia Mafia. The violence between these groups would escalate quickly with shootings being seen on both sides. This violence would find its way to Salvi in July of 1980 to when Salvi was hit with a shotgun blast from a moving car. Being wounded by this incident Salvi was able to recover fairly quickly. The shooting was alleged to be carried out by Victor De Luca and Joseph Padula. This was alleged to be done in response to the attempted hit of Harry Ricca being carried out by the Scarfo faction. After this shooting the violence between the groups would continue until Ricca Bean was arrested and convicted for murder. With Ricca Bean off the street, the war would fizzle out, with Scarfo looking to refocus the family on making money. However, throughout this war, Selby would develop a reputation as a hitman with it being alleged that he carried out multiple shootings and even murders throughout this time. On top of these alleged hits, Salvi would survive an alleged 17 separate hit attempts, drawing media attention to the young mafiosa. This media attention saw Salvi mentioned in the Wall Street Journal, where he was described as a quote rich, young rising star in the family. This media portrayal was mirrored by members of the mafia as many saw. His rise to the top is inevitable and saw him as the future of the family. Savli would also build a strong relationship with the underboss of the family Salvatore Merlino, as he was engaged to his daughter. With this connection to the underboss, his family lineage in the Mafia, and his well-respected reputation among members of the Mafia, one man in the Mafia started to worry that he was getting the powerful. This man was Nicky Scarfa. Scarfa, seeing the influence the young Mafia enforcer had, began to become paranoid about him eventually taking over the family. These thoughts would fester over the years with Scarfo said to be more and more concerned about Salvi's growing power. With his strong connection to Salvatore Merlino, Scarfo was alleged to have told Salvi to break off the marriage with his daughter in order to weaken Salvi's power. With it being alleged that Salvi was asking Nicky for advice about his upcoming marriage, to which Scarfo strongly encouraged Salvi to break off the marriage, Salvi would ultimately follow through with breaking off the marriage putting a permanent strain on his relationship with Salvatore Merlino. With Merlino being said to be infuriated and embarrassed by Salvi calling off the marriage, he turned to Scarfo to take out Testa. Scarfo, seeing the opportunity to get rid of a potential threat and further strengthen his relationship with Merlino, agreed and took out a hit on Salvi. Salvi the savvy man felt that something was wrong and would be extra diligent in terms of safety, making sure to take every percussion at this time Salvi was able to avoid potential hits for months. With many afraid to take up the hit and go against the feared hitman, Scarfo had to get creative with how he would take out Testa, ultimately enlisting Testa's close friends, including Joey Pungitori. The hit on Testa would happen on September 14, 1984. Being lured into a candy store by what he thought were his close friends, 
Salvi was shot in the back of the head, killing him instantly. His body was later found wrapped in a carpet at the side of the road. After this murder, many in the Philadelphia Mafia felt that this hit was unjust. Seeing that Testa was a profitable, dedicated and loyal Mafia member, the idea of him being killed over breaking off an engagement made many start to question Scarfo's leadership. After this hit Scarfo would continue the violence ordering more and more murders over the following years, with the bar for murder seeming to go lower and lower. Many saw the Testa hit as the downfall of the family as well as the downfall of Scarfo's sanity. This would ultimately lead to members turning informants, including the new underboss and nephew to Scarfo Philip Linetti. Linetti would cooperate with authorities, resulting in Scarfa being sent to prison in 1987 for multiple murders. The Philly family would then fall into an unstable state for the next decade, with conflicts for power happening constantly, with many now stating that someone like Testa would have been a perfect fit to take over the family after Scarfo's incarceration. Seen as a respected mafioso until the day he died, the murder of Salvi Testa has always been swirled in controversy with the question what if? Being asked to this day. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. If you enjoy the stories told on these videos, hit the like and subscribe button below. New stories will drop every Wednesday and Friday. If you have any topics you'd like to see covered in upcoming videos feel free to leave a comment. If not I will see you next episode with another story from the Underworld.